Hi, I'm Paula Clutes. Welcome to paulaclutes.com. Um, this is the second video in the series of three. The first video you would have already received was all about getting that negative chatter, that those subconscious messages that typically we pick up when we're quite little from the adults around us, be it our parents, our teachers, people that have um, comments that they make about how hard it is to come by money, how there's never enough. And these messages literally get stored in the back of our subconscious. And when, as we get older and we're dealing with our own money, these messages come back. And even if we don't remember them or believe them, um, the subconscious power of those messages is actually much, much stronger than any kind of positive affirmation that you can put over the surface. So as I said in that first video, it is extremely important to learn the tools and strategies that I went through to be able to... Um, basically eliminate those negative messages um, that hold you back and keep you really quite stuck in your business as I found um, in our business for the 14 years that we have it. So the second video, I actually want to go into a new subject. Um, once you've got that chatter and that negative subconscious under control and you've got the tools that constantly you're working on to get rid of each time those that chatter comes up, you want to open yourself up to actually dealing with your clients and customers in a really positive way um, that makes you really fulfilled that you're achieving something really quite fantastic and providing services and, and products um, that meet the needs of your ideal client customer. Um, so once you've op removed those blocks, you want the abundance and the sales to come in, but you also want that sale process to be a really lovely fulfilling experience for both you and your customer and client. So it's a process that I call heart-centered selling. Um, and it's basically selling is the crux of any business. If you're not selling something, whether it be a product or a service, then the money's not going to come into your business or the services, perhaps if you're exchanging products and services, aren't going to come into your business. And if you're not able to then survive in a point where you're getting enough income in to happily and comfortably look after yourself and your family perhaps, um, the more money that comes into your business obviously, you're then able to spend money with other businesses and services um, and products in your community. So the more abundance and the more money that your business can bring in, it facilitates you being able to then support so many more people and so many more businesses around you in your local community. And other um, producers um, say the more abundance and the more money that's come into our business, it's enabled me to be able to send my kids to um, a specific style of school. My daughter's dyslexic and, and has struggled for basically eight years of her schooling. Without this money coming into our business, I would never be able to afford to give her the most amazing opportunity she now has in a school that's targeting learning for, for dyslexic kids. And that gives me the most incredible fulfillment to be able to let her and have the funds to be able to allow her to go to that kind of school. I also am able to go out to dinner with the family, with my kids and husband, um, and support our local restaurants and cafes who are all small businesses with their own families. Um, lots of them employ local people um, as staff, facilitating that they then are getting paid and have a job and an employment opportunity for them then to be able to support their family. So it's such a fantastic flow-on effect. The more abundance and the more money you can bring into your business, that it facilitates you being able to help so many more people around you. So it's really important to look after yourself and have the, the, the facility to be able to provide and, and have what you want in your life and for your family, but also the greater community around you. So this concept of heart-centered selling, basically, I didn't, I've, I've put a name to it now, but in the years of us having our business and my responsibility was sales, marketing and branding, which I absolutely passionately love, but I discovered along the way that I actually did things a little differently to a lot of the salespeople that we would come in contact with or that I would come in contact with that were trying to sell me 
packaging perhaps or services and all sorts of different things and quite often it was quite an uncomfortable sort of process because they really didn't know who I was, they really didn't know what I needed in our business, um, they didn't ever take the time to actually work out what need it was of mine in our business that they were, they were going to be providing for me. And it all, it kind of felt icky in that I knew that they were selling me something to actually, as the return being that they were getting paid for it. There was, there was no, um, I guess, solid foundation that they genuinely wanted to create a relationship with me that was for the benefit for me and my business, meeting a need that I needed met by whether it be them or somebody else. So this concept that I've called heart-centered selling is just the way I sold our products. We had a gourmet crisp bread range um, that we've just sold the business about six months ago for after 14 years of business. So it's been fantastic to be able to move on and start teaching all of these incredible tools and strategies that I've learned over the last 14 years. So this heart-centered selling is basically the the intention behind the sale is that you know exactly what it is you're providing to meet the need of your client or customer. And you know exactly how that's going to benefit them in their life. So you're not focusing on what monetary value you're going to get in return for selling the people, um, the clients and customers, your products and services. It's literally the value that you're going to give them how they, you're going to make their life easier or make their business work better. And that becomes a focus of what it is you're providing out there into the world. And for that transaction has got a much better feel. It's got a much easier flow to it because your focus is on how beneficial your products and services are to them. And the bonus of it is that you also get paid for it so that you can support your family and your community around you and that's the added benefit but it's not the main focus. Along the process obviously for this heart-centered selling to work as I said you need to know what needs for your ideal client and ideal customer it is that you're meeting. So when I do my six-week boot camp or you do one-to-one -on -one -one coaching with me um, we really nut down into identifying who your ideal customer is and it's very important to know exactly who it is you're targeting because then that allows you to start getting into the nooks and crannies of this person's world and working out exactly where you fit into that with what you've created, how that's going to benefit that person. And then that becomes the most incredible message you could possibly provide for somebody because you're literally telling them what the need is that they have that you are able to meet and that you're able to beat more than meet their expectations, that you've got these fantastic results and quality and what you're providing them is exactly what it is that they need. And you also identify with the ideal um, customer exactly why your product um, stands out from the rest of the crowd. For us in the crisp bread manufacturing, when we began our business, we had one other product basically on the shelves and that was 14 years ago. When we sold our business six months ago, we literally had over a dozen different products in that category, in that crisp bread marketplace. And all saying they did this and that and, and a lot of them, because we had been around since the beginning of that whole gourmet crisp bread market, lots of them had replicated similar style of design to ours or similar shaped product to ours. But we really identified that our ideal customer was somebody that bought beautiful quality cheese, pâtés, they love good food and the quality of the cheese and pâtés that they're buying, upwards of $80 to $100 a kilo, they wanted a phenomenal crisp bread to go with it. So we identified exactly where these people shop, exactly where these people hung out, what sort of things they bought what sort of areas we would be able to incorporate our message that they would see it saying, hey, we know this is what you're after. This is exactly what we make and we make it especially for people like you. So if you can identify that ideal customer 
exactly where you're going to find them. You never again will actually waste money on marketing. We have wasted so much money on sales and marketing before we really nutted down and I got into this, this strategy of identifying our ideal client. And if you get deep enough, you again will never ever waste money targeting the wrong people um, and, and sending your message out and spending money and time on that message that's not in alignment with who your ideal customer is. So back to the heart-centered selling. Basically, it, it comes down to identifying exactly what it is that they want. Um, and then every transaction and every interaction you have with that customer, whether it be one-on-one -on -one between the two of you, um, on the phone or email, to, to all the things that this customer could come in contact with that represents your brand. It's down to your branding, down to your colors even that you're using, the type of typeface that you're using, um, simple little things. All of these things need to represent your message. They need to represent exactly what it is that you're providing to these people. And for them to identify easily in your text, in the look, exactly what it is that you're meeting of their needs, so that it becomes a really simple decision for them. It really becomes a very simple because you're talking to exactly what it is that they're needing. And that whole sales process, basically, they identify, you've done your research, you know exactly what you're doing, you've put so much time and care into creating this package to basically fill that need better than anybody else in your marketplace. That whole sales relationship becomes one of a really fabulous, solid foundation. There's the structure under there that just builds. And because you're targeting their needs so so well and so accurately, they then are more than happy to buy as a repeat customer. They're more than happy then to refer you to family and friends. And you'll find your sales will just be phenomenal. They'll, they'll just take on an organic growth of their own because you are providing such a perfect product for them. There's a really fabulous um, quote that I love from Marie Folio, who does the B-School. And she says that if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. And I have found it one of the most incredible things to remember in that not everyone is going to be your customer. There are so many people in this world that even if you got a fraction of them as your customer, it would be more than probably what you could handle. And, and you would, it would be phenomenal change and shift in your business. Um, so you really need to get as clear as possible exactly who it is and what, what it is you're providing to them. And that whole heart-centered selling process becomes so much easier. It's based on your value you know you're providing value and, and quality and your customer feels that through every interaction with you on your website, on your business card, talking to you. You have this authenticity about what you're providing that is second to none. No matter how many competitors come up in your area, in your industry or in your marketplace, if you've got that down pat and you know exactly what you're doing and exactly what you're providing and everything basically is representing that and what you're providing out into the world, then a competitor can come and go and it will not budge, it will not have any effect on what you're providing and your customer base and what it is that you're actually providing. So I hope you found this information really handy. Um, down below you'll find another PDF that you, you can print out. And basically what I want you to do is identify I call it why yours are not theirs. So it's what it is about your product that is exceptional, why people should be buying your product instead of say however many other competitors you have in your marketplace. So I really want you to nut down and get really clear as to what it is you're offering that's such incredibly valuable, such got such incredible value um, and, and how it differentiates you from everybody else and it becomes a really good way to start your message and how then to develop the entire of your brand and what it is you're representing to the world with that clarity as to, to why people should buy from you and not anybody else providing something similar. So I would love to hear your comments. Please down below leave a comment. Let me know if you're finding this valuable. 
let me know if there's something else that you would like to know about um, because I am had some fantastic feedback from the email I sent the other day about what else you would like to know in this sort of area of information um, and how what is your biggest thing you think getting keeping you stuck in your business so I'd love to hear back from you um, I hope you've enjoyed this there'll be another video a third one in a couple of days time um, so I hope you have a fabulous couple of days in the meantime thank you thank you